Let's talk about Utali Ekwensu, the Nigerian gay hunter who made headlines in March of 2020 after he and his accomplice, 23-year-old Chide Bere Omei, were caught in the process of disposing the body of their latest victim. According to their confession, 28-year-old Utali Ekwensu, whose real name is Angus Chuku Ebuka Mwanko, said he and the victim had met on Facebook and had agreed to meet up in person for sex. Now, the victim whose name is not very publicized was said to be originally from Benue State, but as at the time of this incident, he was believed to be residing in Imo State, Oweri. He and Otali had met on Facebook, it's unclear how long they have been talking, but according to Otali's confession, the guy has been propositioning him for sex, but Otali kept declining. Now, this was happening on Facebook. Eventually, Otali said he agreed to his proposition, and the guy offered to pay him 20,000 naira for just a night with him. So on the 8th or 9th of March of 2020, it was said the victim arrived at Utali's house in Anambra State, all the way from Imo State. This young man had journeyed over two hours to a strange land that he probably wasn't familiar with, to a fairly remote community just to pay for sex. Like a regular guest, Utali was said to have welcomed him into his house. It's unclear how their early conversation went, but clearly I'm sure he would probably be cordial. Eventually, it was now time for the deed. Clearly, the guy had come for something, not to come and make friends, but to come and have sex and pay Utali 20k before probably going back to where he was coming from. I would guess he would be able to make it back to Oiri that same day because it's just two hours apart. So, time for them to do the deed. Time for them to do what they had both agreed to do. And, you know, that was basically the reason why the boy was said to have left his place or wherever he was staying at Imo State down to Anambra State. So, clearly he did not come to chat came to get done and it was at this point that things were said to have started taking the heat it was at this point that many people believe the problem even ensued now according to Tali still he told the boy to pay the 20k upfront before they would do anything and now the boy was like this is not what we agreed we're going to do it first then i would pay you after all i'm in your house i'm in your community what am i going to do run away after sleeping with you but Tali said he insisted that the boy paid him first now i want to believe the money was not in cash i want to believe the boy was supposed to make some sort of transfer with his mobile phone to him and i think that would have probably made it a lot more difficult for you know them to go on having the conversation so clearly the boy was adamant on the fact that Otali would have to render the service first before he would pay the 20k as he had agreed now it's unclear how the argument proceeded or how the argument escalated but according to Otali Ekwensu because he's the one telling the story as at the time of all of this confession the victim was dead so yeah dead people can't tell their side of the story so Otali clearly and uh, his uh, accomplice Chidi were the ones who were giving us what happened. So Utali claimed that when he and the boy were going back and forth on who is going to meet their own end of the baggage first, that was when the boy hit him with a stick and he fell to the ground. Now, I don't know how it escalated so fast because Utali did not give us the details. He just told us that the boy hit him first with a stick and he fell down. That was when his uh, accomplice, Shidi, who he claims to be his cousin or brother, ran into the house and held the boy down. Then Utali got up on his feet and hit the boy back with a stick, killing him instantly. So this was Utali's confession. This is what Utali said happened. This is what Utali confessed that this was how the boy died in his hands. He was trying to make it look like the victim was the aggressor. He was trying to make it seem like he was the victim of physically this whole tragedy so now after the boy had been killed what happened next some sources claim that they were caught in the process of disposing the boy's body this is what a lot of sources claimed this is what a lot of articles read this is what a lot of bloggers blogged however it was confirmed that Utali Ekwensu and his accomplice Chidi actually went to report themselves to a vigilante group in their community there in Nanka to tell the vigilante boys what they had done now this seems like a really smart move this seems like a very innocent move but don't sweat it because it's not as innocent as you think it is them reporting themselves may look like they probably might have killed him out of accident or out of a mistake because some people might think maybe if they actually meant to kill him they wouldn't have gone to report themselves to the vigilante group so when Utali Ekwinsu and his accomplice Chidi went to meet the vigilante boys they told the vigilante boys that see that he had just accidentally killed a guy who wanted to sexually assault him who wanted to sodomize him and he tried to explain to the vigilante guys you know make it look like yeah it was a fight that got out of hand 
but he was only defending himself. This was what was believed that Utali told the vigilante boys. Eventually, the vigilante boys would most likely, you know, relate to their story or feel compassion for them and then encourage them to go to the police to make a statement or just inform the police of what had happened. Obviously, or clearly, the vigilante group felt, yes, these guys who had come to report themselves might be telling the truth or might be innocent or might have really been the actual victims of this case. Maybe they were actually truly defending themselves from the homosexual who had come to sodomize them. So this was what Utali Ekwensu was trying to mold by, was trying to pass by, was trying to convey. This was what Utali Ekwensu was attempting to convey when he went to report himself. Now, just a little atmosphere here so we can get what is actually happening. Homosexuality is found in almost every country in Africa. We live in a society where homosexuals are hated more than men who beat their wives or more than men who rape or more than men who kill africans are generally mostly homophobic that is a fact now it's one thing to be homophobic it's another thing to weaponize homophobia and in my opinion and as you would see later on this is what utali ekwensu was trying to do utali relied heavily on the homophobic nature of our african society to get away with the killing of this young man a lot of people said if he reported himself to the police or reported himself to the vigilante group then there's a chance that he might be right that he was probably only defending himself from the predator from the homosexual who wanted to rape him but what a lot of people don't see that Homophobia can actually still be weaponized and in this case, it was what Utali Ekwensu and his accomplice Chidi were doing. They did not need to hide the victim's body. They did not need to throw the body away into a bush or anywhere at all. You only hide the body of someone you think has value to other people. You only bury the body of someone you think people would miss or care for. This particular victim was a total stranger in Nanka community. He was a total stranger in Anambra self if possible. That was most likely his first time there. So that was one disadvantage for the victim. The second disadvantage is that Utali Ekwensu is Igbo. Everybody around him is Igbo. This guy wasn't Igbo. He's from Benue State. Even though he stayed in Imo State, he probably mostly couldn't speak Igbo. That is the second advantage that Otali Ekwensu had over him. It's not as if Otali went to the guy's place in Benue State. The guy came to his own land and this happened. So Otali knew for a fact that even no matter what happens, this guy was not brother to the community. No one knows him in the community. No one cares for him in the community. And he could speak Igbo. People know him. The vigilante boys probably even know him since he was known to be a ruffian or a, a thug in the community. It's very clear that the vigilante boys would know him and would most likely take his side. They most likely wouldn't even question him if he said that the boy was a predator. So this was how Utali Ekwensu was able to weaponize homophobia to his own benefit or to probably get away with this. Now the third advantage is the guy was homosexual. So that alone beats everything. It was even stated by some articles that when Utali went to meet the vigilante boys, he, he said it in a very dismissive way. He did not tell them that he had killed someone out of fear, out of worry, out of the fact that it's bad, out of the fact that he was scared that he might go to jail. He knew his advantage. So when he even went to tell the boys, he was most likely expecting them to tell him to dump the body somewhere and go away. After all, it was homosexual, so no one cares for people like that. That was basically how Utali Ekwensu was looking to getting away with this. And I know you might be wondering how would I know? Don't worry, you would understand that in a moment. So when Utali told the vigilante boys what he had done, it's unclear what he was expecting them to tell him. But the boys encouraged him to go to the police and they even took him and his accomplice to the police to advise them to just let the police know what happened. And it was at the police station that Utali, you know, repeated the same story, telling the police that this boy came all the way from Oire to promise to pay me money, started trying to rape me and I fought back and I killed him. This was pretty much the confession Utali gave to the police, clearly trying to get them them to fall on his side, trying to get the uh, police to be more compassionate towards him. After all, again, he is their brother. The victim was a total stranger and was also a homosexual. So why should anyone care for the deceased over their brother who is Igbo and speaks uh, their language and is from their their land and also straight. Utali knew that all he needed to say was that the victim was gay and he would be okay. Maybe if he knew what the reaction would have been, he would have most likely gone to dispose the body himself. But Utali was clearly relying on the fact that everybody around him is homophobic. He was most likely relying on the fact that he was a brother to the land and that he knew 
All he had to do was castigate the victim and, you know, claim brotherhood and the entire case would die. That was what he was banking on. And there's a good reason why he was so very confident that if he told people that he had just killed a homosexual, he was not going to suffer for it. After the Anambra State Police heard his case, they didn't buy it. It wasn't adding up. It did not even make sense at all to the police themselves. Instantly, the police put him and his accomplice, Chidi, under arrest. They were both taken to the site where they showed the body of the deceased. The body was eventually taken to a morgue and the police paraded Utali Ekwensu and um, his cousin, Chidi, and gave them an avenue to confess to the whole world what they had done because even the police wasn't exactly buying their story it's unclear why but obviously the story doesn't even make sense generally so i'm not surprised the police didn't even buy it maybe they bought it at the same time the police understood that they had killed somebody and they kind of need to be arrested for it that is the point of killing someone. Around the 10th and 11th of March of 2020, the video confession of Otali Ekwensu uh, and his cousin began to spread across the internet. This is how many people got to hear of the story of how a gay man was killed in Anambra State. Of course, in the confession video, Utali would repeat the same statement. He would repeat the same storyline of how the boy promised to pay him 20k and how he kept turning him down but the boy kept disturbing him. Uh, but then he eventually agreed and told the boy to come and when the boy came, he wanted the boy to pay him first but the boy refused and somewhere along the line, the boy hit him with a stick and he fell down and his cousin came, pinched the boy down and he hit the boy with a stick and the boy died. Obviously, the reaction at first was, you know, supportive of Utali Ekwinsu. Not surprising, we are a homophobic country. Once you hear that someone had killed a homosexual, we don't really want to know the storyline, we don't really care. We want to probably give the killer an award and give them a trophy. And that was kind of like what a lot of people were reacting towards. They were trying to call, you know, the police to release Utali Ekwensu that he's doing the Lord's job, whatever that means. But as the story began to circulate, people began to ask the right questions. People with brains mostly, people who had thinking faculty, people who most likely did not also buy his story, people who had questions, people who saw the portals and the part of his stories that weren't adding up. Was Utali himself a gay man? Well, Utali said he wasn't gay. So if he isn't gay or if he wasn't gay, why did he invite a gay man to his house for sex for 20,000 naira. Even though Otali said he kept refusing his offer, people were like, okay, if the guy kept pestering you, if the guy kept trying to demand sex from you on Facebook, you had every possibility or you had every chance, you had every right, you had the block button, you had the unfriend button, you could have easily blocked him off and that would be the end of it. But for the fact that you agreed to his offer, you made him believe that when he comes to your place, that whatever he wanted to happen would happen and he would pay you the money and that would be it. So with all of these questions coming out, people also began to question Utali's motive. They began to question, did this guy really try to abuse him? Is Utali really telling the truth? Did he actually kill this young man out of self-defense? In fact, people also began to reason widely that how would a man leave a state and travel two hours to someone else's house to pay them to have sex with them. I mean, usually if people want to offer money for sex, I guess Utali would have been the one to travel to his place to get paid for it. More people even began to question, was he really gay? Who knows if he was gay? We only know that he is gay because Utali is the one saying so, Utali and his cousin. What if this guy was just a random guy who was lured in under the guise of having a business or who was you know deceived or for some reason who was just an unfortunate victim and after he has been killed Utali is now you know accusing him of being gay because he knows that once he tells everyone that the guy was queer no one would care for him whether or not he's alive no one would care that he's dead with these questions coming up people began to change their mind regarding Utali and, and the murder case people began to see the possibility that this young man might have actually been the victim and not Utali who claimed that he was being uh, sexually accosted or he was being abused by the guy when he did what he did. And people also questioned his explanation as to, wait, 
if the guy said that he's not going to pay you until you have sex with him at what point did the fight start because Tade never really gave us that explanation he only told us that the guy hit him with a stick and he fell down what led to that part what made him hit you with a stick were you trying to rob him of his money and the guy fought back because obviously that would be the only reason why Utali would lure this young man knowing fully well that he was not going to give this man what the man requested and yet still allowed him come to his house what else would Utali want with him if not for the fact that Utali most likely wanted the money without wanting to offer the service clearly Utali knew that this guy coming to his place he was not going to have anything to do with him but he was going to get that money eventually when it came time for Utali to get the money without doing what he agreed to do I would guess the guy would want to leave but I did not think or I don't think anyone would agree that Utali would allow him leave without the money because obviously Utali wanted the money but when he knew he was not going to get the money he had to take it by force and it was in the process of this force of trying to get the young man's phone so he could use the, the phone uh, and probably transfer the money or maybe he could tie him down and uh, abduct him and force him to send the money this could have been Utali's plan because that was why his cousin was there to help him accomplish it apparently the young man himself did not relent he fought back and in the process of fighting back it was said according to some other sources that the young man opened his phone and broke the sim some sources said he, he swallowed his sim card just so that he could prevent uh, Utali from getting a hold of the sim in order to most likely transfer money from his account or force him to transfer the money or call his parents for ransom so it's unclear how that fight really went but that is another version of how it was explained to the public that Utali and the victim had a scuffle and Utali was trying to get his phone you know so that he could most likely call his people or transfer money and the guy broke the sim card in the process of them fighting and eventually Utali killed him. Many people knew that Utali's statement or Utali's explanation of what happened of what happened with the guy did not exactly hold water. There were just too many loopholes. There were just too many things he was not saying. He just made it seem like he was the victim and he was only defending himself. But when many more people thought about it for the longest of time, they realized that Utali was lying. And I see if this questioning was not enough. As if this backlash was not enough, a new revelation soon made headlines and a shocking discovery was made about Utali Ekwensu himself. And I think this is where it all makes sense. People who were familiar with Utali Ekwensu revealed that this guy he killed was not his first victim. It will be later learned that Utali had previously killed a man believed to be gay in the past and he was taken to court for it but his lawyer argued self-defense and that the man was trying to sodomize him and, or, or rape him and because of that Utali was let off the hook. Utali didn't suffer for killing the, the, the previous victim so I am guessing that the fact that Utali had gotten away with it the first time gave him the courage to think that he would most likely get away with it again. I guess it was through the first case of him being dismissed after killing somebody that he knew that we as a society we don't value gay people so he felt the need to lure deceive them into his den beat them take their money and basically kill them if he wanted to and he would not even need to hide the body because he knew that once he tells the world that the person he killed was a homosexual he would be getting accolades as the news or the story that he had previously killed man suspected to be gay in the past and he had gotten away with it as that news began to circulate people who are believed to be in the queer community also began to speak out about their experience with Utali how Utali is in their DMs or messages trying to lure them into his own den trying to get them to come meet him so that he would most likely do the same thing to them there were rumors that he had been victimizing the gay community for the longest of time that he would lure them deceive them trap them find them beat them steal their money embarrass them and a particular source did say that he had killed some queer people and had thrown their body in the bush although there is really no backup to this claim this is just a particular user who claimed that Otali had actually killed more victims than we know of and they had probably been getting away with it so with more people sharing their bad experiences with Otali Ekwensu the world got to know that this man was not a victim he was not a prey but indeed a predator it was when he was now dubbed the gay serial killer or 
the gay hunter, his innocence was quickly thrown out the shelves. Obviously, this victim that he had killed was not isolated, was not the first time. It was most likely not even the second time. Some more users began to point that he had a particular weapon that he was always with. A lot of people who had known him personally pointed out that Utali had a weapon that he carried along with him anywhere he went to. He even took pictures of it and posted it on Facebook. It was a sword looking kind of weapon that was sort of disguised. People pointed out that that weapon was what he referred to as the Utali Equinsu, the devil's weapon. It was what he used to kill his victims. Some sources even believe that it was the weapon he used to murder this particular guy that we're speaking of. Even though he did claim that he used a stick, I guess maybe that was why the police did not buy his story initially because he claimed he used a stick to kill him. But most likely when the police saw the guy's body, they realized that the guy had been stabbed because Utali has the weapon in his house. He always had it with him 24 seven. So this was a weapon that was at close reach to him. And this was a weapon many people said Utali used to kill this young man. So basically, after all of this revelation circulated around, people knew that there was no point being compassionate for the devil himself. So friends, this is a story about Utali Ekwinsu, the gay hunter. Although his story is just particularly isolated as to one incident, except the other ones that came afterwards were just revelation from people in the queer community who were familiar with him and who made these revelations out there for the world to know. As at the time of making this video, not much was said about him or about his friend. The last we heard that they had been sent to jail and were most likely going to face trials. It's unclear if they've been going to court and nothing has been said about the victim or his family. To be honest with you guys, it was difficult getting the name of the victim. That is how low-key this victim was. His real name is not in circulation. There were a few suggestions but they did not tally and they did not match. So I decided to avoid using the name altogether which is why I refer to him as victim or guy or the boy. But if anyone knows his name, feel free to share. And if anyone knows any updates regarding this story, it's alright if you want to share. You can leave a comment in the comment box. So guys, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think about this story. Let me know where you stand with Utali Ekwensu. Clearly, I understand as a homophobic nation, a lot of people might take his side. But I personally wouldn't. I don't take his side. I think he's a monster and I think he deserves to be in jail. And I hope he rots there for the longest of time. He and his accomplice. And I don't believe he killed him out of self-defense. I believe he knew and had a plan for the young man moments or long before he even got to his place. But let me know your thoughts, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and turn on the bell button so whenever there is a new video you'll be the first to know.